What is tradition? 26 sectional championships. Six regional championships. Four semi-state championships. Two state championships. Is it pride? Passion and spirit. Could it be grit? Determination and toughness. No, it's not any of these things. Only one thing can define tradition. Good. Lines it right back to Collier. Inside the Lucas Shields. Bounce pass to Collier. And the paint hit shot from about eight feet out is good. Sort of a tough shot. He was floating to his right. Maria McCoy, wide. Westview Lady Warrior Basketball on LaguanaMedia.com. Westview Warrior Basketball is streaming live on the World Wide Web at LaguanaMedia.com. Tonight's game is brought to you by the following gold sponsors. Shipshe Service, located south of US-20 on State Road 5 in Shipshawana. By Height Auto Body on US-20 West in LaGrange. By Tiffany's Restaurant, located on East Lake Street in Topeka. Also by Jerry Standard Service in downtown Middlebury and by Laguana Printing and the Hometown Treasure. This evening's game is also brought to you by the following silver sponsors. The Fast Lane Subway in Topeka. By Emma Warehouse in downtown Emma. Also by Frontline Auto Tech on Taylor Drive in Shipshawana. By Topeka Do It Best Hardware at the Blinker Light in Topeka. By the Steve Miller team at Remax Realty Marketing by Mike's Automotive Service on Layman Avenue in Topeka, by Intera Credit Union, with locations in Shipshawana and Topeka, also by Reeksecker Marketplace in Shipshawana, by The Brethren Retreat at Shipshawana Lake, by Dale's Handyman Service, by Troyer's Saddlery on North Village Drive in Shipshawana, by Warehouse Designs, located between Shipshawana and LaGrange on US-20, also by Quality Floor, just three and a half miles north of Topeka on County Road 600 West. By Yoder Shipshawana Hardware, located in Yoder Shopping Center in Shipshawana. Weaver Furniture Sales, located just south of the intersection of State Road 5 and US 20 in Shipshawana. Our halftime trivia contest and pizza giveaway is made possible by Emma Cafe. And our individual sponsors are Bud and Margaret Fink, John and Leslie Cook, Jim and Liz Stump. And now, out to the game with Jerry Hostetler and Dan Byler. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another exciting Westview Warrior basketball game tonight between the visiting West Noble Chargers and a few earlier this evening, the uh, junior varsity won their... And... Uh, and shortly here, we'll see the Varsities go at it. West Noble 3 and 11, Westview 7 and 9. We'll be right back to take a look, a little more look at the earlier game and to take a 
look ahead at tonight's varsity action. This is Westview Warrior Basketball on LaGuanaMedia.com. Tiffany's Restaurant in Topeka is a proud supporter of Westview Basketball. Features weekly specials, including all-you-can-eat fish on Wednesday evening, their delicious baby back ribs on Thursday night, and on Friday night, enjoy their mouth-watering prime rib. On Friday and Saturday evenings, stop in and enjoy Tiffany's Buffet. If you can't dine in, carry-out is always available at Tiffany's Restaurant in Topeka. Open Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. Eight, eight. Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana has been serving the Michiana area for over 25 years. At Weaver Furniture Sales, you'll find a large selection of mattresses, recliners, grandfather clocks, and much more. And during the Christmas holiday season, you'll find many pieces specially marked. Pick a piece off of the showroom floor or have it custom made at Weaver Furniture Sales just south of 5 and 20 in Shipshawana. Serving Michiana families for over 25 years. Weaver Furniture Sales, a proud supporter of Westview Basketball. We're back here at Westview High School tonight. Jerry Hostetler tied up the office for a bit, so uh, we have a guest color commentator, 2009 graduate, Adam Christner. Welcome, Adam. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, sort of looking around the crowd, trying to find somebody who has a little experience with Westview basketball. I saw you over there, and I thought, you know what, that would probably work. And I think your dad's helped us out in the past at times, too, hasn't he? He has. I asked him if he wanted to do it, and he said he's retired from it, so <laughs> he handed it off to me. Okay. So, uh, well, before we get into some of that, let's uh, earlier this evening, yeah, I'd mentioned that as I mentioned their 10th, or now I mislaid that paper again. Can you believe that? There it is. Uh, they picked up their 12th win. They're 12 and 6 now, and uh, defeating the visit 3 to 40. West Noble pretty much lived by the three point shot tonight. They had four or five, 20 for 24 of their 40 points tonight. And. Uh, they were really having trouble later in the game until they brought a, a guy that's not even listed on the JV back down from the varsity. 6'5", um, uh, Cade I think. Bar yeah. Barrett, Bear height, Bar height, and uh, gave them a little bit of an inside game. But Westview pretty much, at uh, first, uh, first quarter, when West Oval was hitting all the threes, we're having some trouble after that. Westview pretty much in control. Uh, leading scorer tonight for Westview is Kenton Weaver with 11. Uh, Sam Sharp had 10. Jemiah Hostetler, 9, as did Matthew Jones. That's one of Matthew's best outings. I think he's, his best for the year is 11. So, or no, 12. That was actually just last game against the East Side. So, um, those guys are playing well. Yeah, they, they definitely looked, looked really good that game and uh, controlled the ball really very good in the fourth quarter, too. Right, yeah, they did a lot of ball control. Um, so we're just talking about those are all freshmen, sophomores, and uh, you you had a little experience this year with uh, boys just a little bit younger than that. How'd, how'd the eighth grade season go? For That's you? correct. I helped out with the eighth grade this year, and we finished off the year 21 and one um, with the conference championship this and year. My understanding was that one loss was avenged later. Yes, correct. We uh, lost to East Nova early on in the season by three points, and then we came back a few weeks later and beat them. I think by eight or nine points after. So we had a great season, and kids really got better throughout the season. So yeah, another good crop of youngsters coming up, and uh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see how they fit into the program next year. Obviously, this year not have see what that does to our numbers. Uh, a fair number of those kids are probably going to be going on and playing, won't they? Yeah, I would think most of my kids are, have said they're going to go on. Um, so that I'm excited to see where they fit in. Like you said, I, they have a couple that have the potential of really helping out this freshman class this year, next year, I believe. Um, it's how hard everything this offseason, but um, I'm happy to see what the program looks like in the next couple years. Night and uh, I forgot to look earlier. I guess if you were watching at home, uh, might have seen the guys wearing the striped red and white socks, vertical stripes. Uh, those certainly don't look familiar to me. More of the white socks with the big, thick red stripes around. That's what my dad was saying. He had the high white socks. Right. So, uh, but uh, actually, right now, probably on your screen, you can see the cheerleaders are wearing. Oh, there you. Yeah, the guy. <laughs> so that's pretty neat that he's willing to let uh, let the guys get in the spirit of things. And uh, yeah, coach coach Jones is really good about that stuff. So I, I I know I loved it when I played back with him that he allowed us to do some things like that evening with the alumni things going on I, at the very end of it I got tied up with work and was able to get see some of the pictures and uh, take a picture take our own picture at the very end but I wasn't there for the entire event 
Yeah, I'd, I'd hope to be there as well, but yeah, we had some things going on at the office that we're trying to take care of. And in fact, that's why Jerry's not here tonight. So uh, I got there after it was all over. Yeah. So I just, I left again. But I think that the, the school's been around for 50 years and uh, the year I was born, I guess. <laughs> Call Dale at 260-336-9364. Topeka Do It Best Hardware at the Blinker Light in Topeka is your authorized Maytag, Whirlpool, and Amana dealer. Topeka Do It Best has been selling appliances and providing service to the Topeka area for over 40 years. See JJ for your appliance parts. If they're not in stock, no problem. Topeka Do It Best will have them the next business day. Topeka Do It Best Hardware provides in-store repairs, and they make house calls. If it's worth doing, do it best. Call 593-2973. One year we got beaten sectional championship to Fairfield. Junior year, got beat one. Okay, so, yeah, just a minute left on the clock. The teams are heading back to get uh, instructions. I hope you guys didn't hear that. We were just trying to discuss. We were just discussing what the trivia question is going to be. <laughs> I don't think it went out on the air, but um, we. Uh, I think we'll pause here and uh, see if we can pick up the dynamic sensations as they'll be performing the national anthem for us tonight. So we'll stay right here for that. Beautiful rendition there of the national anthem by uh, Miss Katie Miller's Dynamic Sensations. Uh, Katie Miller, the new choral director here at Westview High School, start, started this year. So, um, be taking a look at the starting lineups. I just now realized something, Adam. I'm going to have to get up here in a second. I'm going to put you on the air by yourself. So, are you ready for that? <laughs> I might let you do uh, the uh, starting lineup for, for West Noble. And if you just pick them up as they come out. They could see him. So. That's fine. We got to get the whistle guy out there. <laughs> no, actually, I guess I can do them, and then you can you can do the uh, do us. So, at a guard for West Noble, number 13, Mason Stover, a 5'10 sophomore. Also at a guard position, Grant Moser, a 6'2 senior. Larry Nicholson, a 6'5 junior, starting in the center, I believe, for the Chargers tonight. And Cade Barheit, interestingly enough, uh, we talked about him a minute ago, a sophomore 6'5", in one of the forward positions. He played on the junior varsity for a while there this evening. And in the other forward position, Evan Porter, or actually he might be in the center position. I didn't quite catch that. The senior, 6'5", Evan Porter. You have for the Warriors starting as guard, uh, the senior, 5'8". Number 11, Norman Miller. And as the freshman, Elijah Hales, gets another start tonight. Coming in as another freshman, number 25, Cody Collier in the lineup. The senior on the, on the starting lineup, 31, Andrew Yoder. 
And bringing in the rest of the starting lineup is 55, Nick Rensberger. Bringing it across the table here. Down low. Kicks it back out to Stover. In the middle of the paint. Kicks out to 45. Looks like they're really being patient there. Yep. Wesley with an aggressive offense. Knocks the ball loose, but last goes off Andrew Yoder, I believe. So That's right. West Noble will be inbounding underneath their own basket off to the right side. We're actually out heighted here, aren't we? We do look it's a little a, out height, which a lot is of unusual. Yeah. Quick inbound pass uh, to Nicholson. Passes it outside to Mosier. Three-point shot off the mark, and Westview coming back down the floor with it. Moving around the top, Andrew Yoder up top. Hits it to Norman on the right side. Looking inside to Rensberger, not there. Picks it back out to Collie and across to Elijah. Setting things back up. Love it when Norman posts up underneath there, calling for the ball. Andrew right around Nicholson and goes up strong. Fouled on the way up, so he'll be shooting a couple shots. It's a good move by Andrew there, getting to the ba basket early on. 7-0 per shot, or to go in the game. Uh, in the first quarter, not the game. Yeah. That was a quick game, wasn't it? Yeah. Hits them both. Westview with a two-point lead. Westview actually applying a little pressure here. Sort of token pressure. West Noble quickly down the floor. And almost loses the ball, but uh, Norman Miller all over <coughs> um, Stover there. Drive inside, dishes it off. Nice inside play. Big guy to big guy. Nicholson scores and tied up at two. 6.38 to go in the first quarter. Andrew with the wide open three, off the back of the rim, follows his shot, gets the rebound, dishes it inside to Rensberger. Rensberger was expecting the shot there, I believe. Yep. No pressure this time. Stover will be bring, bringing the ball down. Moving it around the top, down to the side. To so <laughs> I wasn't Can't quite ready with the names here yeah, tonight. I mean, so Rensberger pulls down the rebound, saves it from going out of bounds, and Andrew Yoder brings the ball down the floor. Punches it inside to Collier. Ball's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay down here. It's diving play there by Grant Mosier. Inbounding clear down in the far left corner. Elijah gets it in. West Noble looks like they're playing a, well, they're playing man-to-man, -man, but I think they're switching on screens maybe here. So Elijah down in the right corner, looks inside, dribbles it back up to the shoulder, out top to Andrew, whips it around to Collier. Back to Elijah right at the top of the key. Coach Yoder barking out some other orders, and Elijah drives in. <laughs> Well, he had two guys hammering him there. Evan Porter and Nicholson both had their hand up there trying to block the shot. I think Porter's going to get called for that, so he'll pick up his first. That'll be two on West Noble now, and that'll put Elijah at the line to shoot a couple. Another good drive there by Westview. Hales gets a great job getting to the hoop. Yeah, I, I, I think that's probably his strong suit. Love to see him do that. I mean, he... This is a nice job bringing the ball down yeah. the floor, too. Don't get yeah, me wrong, but absolutely. as far as scoring, I think, you know, driving in and getting those shots inside is great. Hales hits both, so Westview up 4-2. to two. Looks like the Warriors are going to put pressure on every time they hit a free throw. Is, uh, oh, so looks the game plan for that. Either every free throw or just every made bucket, possibly. Yeah, we haven't, we, seen one we haven't seen one of those yet. So. Pushes it inside to Nicholson, pops it back out to Barhart. Yeah, Barhart. I still find it interesting they had a, a starter playing JV ball earlier. <laughs> yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought he did a good job with the JV yeah. team. He came in and played well for him. So Stover looking to throw it inside, gets it inside to Porter. A nice little right-handed uh, shot, and 
Norm Miller gets the rebound and Nicholson clobbers him a bit there. So he'll, Nicholson will pick up his first. That'll be three on West Noble now. 4.56 to go. I think that's the second one oh, on Nicholson. Nicholson? Yep. You're right. That, yeah, that's right. He it's had the two first quick one. Ones. So, so they're two tallest guys, both with, well, one with one, one with two fouls. Collier gets a nice inside feed, goes up strong, but loses the ball. <laughs> Giving that to Westview. <laughs> Coach uh, Jim Best not real happy with that call. Lob inside to Andrew. Nice. Oh, nice reach around to get in there. Nick Rensberger puts it up. Andrew Yoder back up. <laughs> Couple offensive boards playing pitch and catch over the top of the rim. Andrew Yoder gets the bucket. Four for Andrew now. 6-2 yep. Westview. Stover Good job drives on down the, the left side. And they're gonna. Yeah, go ahead. Good job on the offensive rebounds. What I was gonna say down there. That's that's key to this game. Well, and especially when we're out. I mean, you know, they're taller than we are. Out height. Is that yeah. the word? I, I, you can use. It. I think everyone knows it. <laughs> Coming in for the Chargers, uh, Colton Peterson, a 6'3 senior. So some more height, but uh, Nicholson out right now. Triggering it in, Stover takes the three-point shot on the left side, misses quite short, quickly down the floor, and Norman tried to pass it instead of taking the shot, Cody Collier, and it was cut off, picked off by Stover. All the way underneath, tries to pass it out, deflected, Elijah ends up with it, Andrew Yoder down the floor, takes the shot, oh, he's blocked, blocked, blocked by uh, how'd they pronounce it? Bar height? Bar height, I think. Yeah. And uh, Andrew, nice job coming inside, dishing it back to Collier. So Collier will step the line to shoot a couple. So four fouls called on West Noble here in the early goings, just halfway through the first quarter. And that one's going to be called. Let's see, who did they call that on? Looks like they called it on Daniel Wiley, I believe. Number 11. Okay, I thought but maybe I that was But I don't see it. No, I think there. That's, that's, that's Norman? That's still that's up there Norman. from Norman's foul, so I don't know if they yeah, put I'm it up. Sure. Collier there hit we that go. first free throw. Peterson, it looks like okay. we called it on. Second shot long, pulled down there by Porter. Working around the left side to Mosier again. Stover drives inside and goes to kick it out. Going to call a foul, and that's going to be Norman's second, I believe. Yep. Josh Hostetler checking in for Norman. He was up there before he even picked up that second foul. Yeah. <laughs> it's ready to come in already. Quick play on the side. The Mosier hits a bucket. Westview's still up seven to four now. Collier has it up top, going down the right side. Andrew Yoder looking, crosses it over to, crosses it across and uh, on the rebound there, Jansen Brandenberger looking for the rebound and uh, but it was knocked out over top of him by Evan Porter. So Westview will get the ball out of bounds underneath on the right side of their own basket. Triggered in by Elijah, handed right back to him. He drives inside, tries to get the shot up, pulled down by Collier, I mean by uh, Porter. West Noble coming back the other way. Stover drives, being hawked by Hostetler. Collier almost popped it loose from him. Moving it back around the top, looks like they're setting back up. Mosier passes it to the right side to Barheit. Looking for his man. Inside to Stover. Stover out, dribbles it out. The right side now comes back up to the top. Barheit on the left side dribbles to the right. Cross to Mosier. Being very patient. Punches it inside to Porter. He goes up strong and he is blocked by Andrew Yoder. Pass ahead to Josh Hostetler. Josh Hostetler puts it in. It's a great pass by Elijah Hales. Definitely something he does well. Yeah. 
Bar height passes it across the front. Uh, looks like Brandenberger trying to keep a handle on uh, Porter picks up the foul. So Brandenberger picks up his first. And that'll be the third on Westview. Triggering in on the right side underneath the basket. Porter lost the ball. Brandenberger knocked it loose out of his hand, and as he tried to re-corral it, it trickled out of bounds. So Westview gets the ball on the turnover. 9-4, 2 4 to go here in the first period. Elijah brings it across the timeline. Westview pops out. Elijah drives it in. Mosier reached around and poked it loose, almost nailed Andrew Brown over there by the door <laughs> with the basketball, getting set to take some pictures for yearbook, I assume. So Elijah will be triggering it, in, triggering it in on the left side of the basket, right underneath. Inside to Collier, looking back out to Elijah. Nice oh, pass. Nice cut inside to Josh Hosteller. Josh has four, both on beautiful passes by Elijah Hales. Stover bringing it across the timeline quickly. Josh Hostetler on him. Looking for somebody to pass to. Having a little trouble getting rid of it. Now across to bar height. Stolen by Hales all the way down. A little stutter step. Puts it up and in. And Hales has his fourth point. West is out to a 13-4 lead. Hostetler just stole the ball from bar height. Hales goes up with it. Misses. But Brandenberger with the rebound. Fouled on the putback. You know, with this team, it feels like if they get out ahead early, they start having fun, they start flowing, and it just goes really well. You're, you're exactly right. That's the, what I've noticed with this team early on is early starts, they finish, they usually finish well. There's been a couple games in there they haven't had well, a great they finish. They stalled but, out, yeah. yeah but but uh, if, if they don't get going early on, it seems like they really struggle to ever get into the lead. Coming in for the Chargers for the first time is uh, Walker Donnelly, 5'6", junior. And for Westview, um, Lucas Yoder checked in. Hales is having a good start to the game right now. He's commanding the floor, having good passes, finishing at the rim. It's a good start for Westview. Another offensive board. Brandenberger or missed the free throw, but Andrew Yoder got the, got the rebound. Missed shot there by Hales, and West Noble bringing the ball down. Stover. Little dribble, kicks it out to the left side. Uh, oh, see that Donnelly just came in, and Andrew Yoder is going to get called on the reach-in foul there on the penetration pass. It's going to be Andrew's first four on Westview now. A minute left here in the first period, 14-4 Westview. Moser throws it into the backcourt, finally to Stover to get the ball in. Donnelly on the right side, looking to drive. Kicks it back out to Mosier. Mosier, I think Mosier'd like to shoot it. So far, he hasn't been able to. Ball on there. Brandenberger. It looked like Brandenberger, but Andrew did the dirty work there. Andrew's. That's a couple blocks tonight for him. The fans love that one. Yes, they did. That's a lot of fun to watch. Brandenberger knocks it loose again, and then Porter loses it. Out of bounds. He's complaining, saying he's getting hit, but. Uh, I guess, you know, once, until that ball comes in and is in somebody's possession, it's anybody's ball. Especially yeah. high school basketball. Yeah. They're going to let them play a little bit, and Andrew's doing a really good job of, and, and Brandenburger's doing a great job of bodying up, so. Hales, nice hesitation there. Went up for the shot. I think Porter's going to pick up his second. So both their five or six five guys with a couple fouls now. Is that yep. what you're showing? I have two with him and uh, two for Nicholson right now. So Elijah Hales at the line to shoot a couple here. Again, another great drive by Elijah. It's coming a thing right now. He knows his strong point, and uh, well, as he's working on a shot throughout the season, Coach Yoder's working on the shot with him. He's he's still doing a really good job getting to the basket. Yeah, I think, like I said, that. And yeah, I just love seeing him driving in there. That time the shot a little long. Lucas Yoder ends up, had the rebound temporarily, and then uh, see uh, Peterson ends up with it. Stover bringing it down. Josh is all over him, and back to Peterson, across to Porter. He gets the easy bunny on the right side. 15 to six still, Westview still up by nine. Andrew Yoder drives. Fade away, fade away from 10-footer. 
just before the buzzer puts Westview up 17 to six. So after one quarter, Westview with a nice 11 point lead. We'll be right back. This is Westview Warrior Basketball on LaguanaMedia.com. The hometown treasurer has been covering the Topeka, Shipshawana communities and the Westview schools for over 14 years. Keep up to date on area and school activities. The Hometown Treasure is a monthly publication published by Laguana Printing, featuring full-color photos and news from all six schools in the Westview school system. Also, articles written by local writers, as well as games and contests for children and adults alike. Pick up our latest issue on newsstands or check us out on Facebook or visit our website at the hometowntreasure.com. At Mike's Automotive Service on Lehman Avenue in Topeka, you'll find a talented staff of mechanics to help you with all of your automotive repair needs. Brett, Adam, and Ryan are all ready to tackle your repairs on all makes and models of cars and light duty trucks. Everything from a simple oil change and service to brakes and suspension and much more. Mike's also offers 24 hour towing service. Call or stop by Mike's Automotive in Topeka 260-593-0434 for after our emergencies, call 260-350-2224. Westview has the ball to start the second quarter. Nicholson checked back in for West Noble during that timeout. He's their only big guy in there. Andrew on the left side. Sorry, right side. <laughs> Guess you could see that if you're watching. Looks like they switched to a zone here. Andrew gets the shot at the free throw line, gets it to fall. Andrew up to eight points now, leading all scorers. Stover bringing it down the right side, Norman on him. I, say, I don't think they were counting until just about then. Cross court pass to who just came in there. Stover spin move inside, tries to go up. Rensberger puts his hand right on top of the ball and called for a jump held ball there spun around there thinking he was going to go up and Rensberger says I don't think it's so. It's a great job of help side defense though I know as a former player that's something they work on every single practice and Nick was in the perfect spot for that. Ball into Nicholson throws it away Stover cut the other way Norm, Norm Miller missed the easy layup at the other end and West Noble quickly coming back Donnelly with the ball driving inside again kicks it out to Stolman back to Donnelly Lucas on him back to Stover cross to Peterson, Peterson just left wide open there at the free throw line gets a bucket 19 to 8 Westview still up Lucas Yoder punches it inside to our big man Norm <laughs> Miller Elijah back up top moving it around the side Andrew dribbles it back up to the top in sight oh beautiful pass to Hales Ah, ball wouldn't go. Nicholson with the rebound for West Noble, and there Stover brings it back down across the timeline. 6.16 to go here in the second period. As time goes on, Elijah will learn how to finish on that one, take, take his body, but that maturity process will happen there. Yeah, you keep, have to keep remembering these guys are, what, 14? <laughs> yeah, half the guys can't even drive to practice right, right now. Yeah. Working the ball on the perimeter now. Stover drives the baseline, falls down. He's still dribbling the ball. Tried to pass it. Did get it passed, but uh, Lucas picked it off. Inside, Andrew takes the wide open three. In and out and back in. 11 for Andrew now. 22 to 8, 539 to go in the second period. Donnelly driving. Punches it inside. And Stover will get his first rest of the night. Punches good. it inside. Andrew knocks the ball loose. It's good hands again. Yeah, Donnelly dove after. He could have let, let it go, I think. Oh, he kicked it. Okay. We got our engineer down there with a uh, good perspective he, yeah, down there on the perspective side. Perspective down there on the side. So Elijah. Across to Andrew, Andrew looking up top, lobs it inside to Rensberger, beautiful feed. Rensberger gets his first two of the night. Push that lead out, 24 to eight. Donnelly trying to go somewhere, Collier's not letting him, and now they're calling him, they're having his hand on him. The, I think the, officially the rule at the beginning of the season, they said that you could put your hand on him in, 
to make first contact, but then you had to let go. And What the referees explained to me while I was coaching is that they're getting away from, if you at any point put two hands on a body, they're calling that immediately foul. So the two hands on a body are no longer available, and the arm bar that used to be legal is no longer legal. Nicholson tried to go up for the shot, had a nice pass underneath to feed him, missed the shot, but uh, foul is going to be called on Rensberger. So Rensberger picks up his first foul. That's seven on Westview. Of course, it's a shooting foul, so Nicholson will be shooting a couple. Nicholson with two points so far tonight. He hits that one. Hit the Burger Burger swap. Rensberger in. Uh, sorry, Rensberger out. Brandenberger in. One more for Nicholson from the line. And that one's good as well. Quickly bringing the ball back the other way. Elijah across the timeline. Hostetler down in the corner. Working it across the top. Andrew has it now. Takes the shot just inside the th three-point line. And I think that's exactly what you talked about yep. earlier. Didn't finish strong. Elijah got the offensive board, but then just sort of threw it up there instead of going strong to finish. And as he gets older, he'll learn to go through the body and go up there and get draw contact and get a foul on that. That just comes with experience. West Noble working the ball around the top again. Mosier drives, spin move inside, gets it to fall from about eight feet. Hostetler, nice drive inside, kicks it over to Collier, but then the ball comes loose. And he's going to call Josh for trying to get back after him. I'm not sure which I, way that call's I going. I think they're going to go the other way on this one. Yeah, they, uh, indeed they are. Stallman picks up his, his first. That's uh, eight or seven, seven for West Noble. So Josh Hostetler steps to the line. Hits that free throw. I'm not keeping track yeah. of all the missed shots. Are you on the free throws? Um, I have on the free throws what we got going on. Right now we've missed um, three free throws. We've been there quite a bit already for this early in the game. Calmly swishes the second. West Noble quickly across. Long pass into the elementary section there, right over the hands there of... Uh, Stolman. Coming down, Elijah Hales survey surveying things. Start the play. Cut inside, Josh Hostetler. Had a nice backdoor move there. Gets called, or gets fouled as he's cutting through there. It's going to be on uh, Peterson. Colton Peterson. So his second. Yeah, his second. So they're going to they're going to be. Well, I guess both teams have seven and eight fouls, so I guess that's not as much as I thought, maybe. Hosteller calmly hits his third free throw in a row. A couple big guys coming back in. Evan Porter coming back in, and uh, Bar Barheights. Bar I, th I think that's how you say I it. I think so. Second shot for Josh, also good. Andrew blocks the pass. Wasn't a shot this time, but he still got a block. Tried to throw the ball out of, off of Elijah Hales. He just caught it, and then Coach Yoder <laughs> called a quick timeout. Boy, I think he about hit him right in the face yeah, there, didn't and, he? Yeah, threw it right in his chest and caught it. It's a great catch by Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a short break here as well. This is Westview Warrior Basketball, LaguanaMedia.com. When you're turning your house into a home, your furniture plays a big part in the finished product. And you'll love the finished products at Weaver Furniture Sales in Chipshawana. Come see the Weaver family. They'll work with you to find a piece that meets your needs. Or have it custom built just for you. Weaver Furniture Sales is located just south of 5 and 20 in Chipshawana. Or visit their website at weaverfurniturasales.com. Back here at the Westview. Chargers just breaking out of their huddle. Timeout called to make sure. Actually, I think we had ended up saving the ball because uh, Elijah had thrown the ball from from his back to one of our players. But in any case, timeout used. 
Lob inside to Josh Hostetler, back outside to Hales, and he drives all the way to the bucket. Oh, they're saying the foul was on the floor before he got there. So Elijah will be shooting one and one. Foul's going to be called on Donnelly. I believe that's his first. So 3.30 to go here in the second period, and uh, the rest of the, the way here in this half, Wesley will be sh shooting two shots every foul. Elijah hits that one. Hales up to six points now. I think, what, four of those came from the free throw More line? More of them from the line. Warriors shooting a lot of free throws right now. That's a good sign. Second one good as well. And, yeah, you're right. I think it must be on the made free throws that we're pressing. Almost, Hostetler almost picked it off. Donnelly looking for someone to throw it to. Finally gets it across half court to Porter. Back to Donnelly. Drives to the middle. Nice behind the back dribble. Looking to punch it inside to Porter again. Porter... Lowers the shoulder and just bowls his way in there. Got away with it, scores. Quickly down the other way, Collier gets inside. Easy bucket. Feed by Hale, set that one up. That's a good transition basket by the Warriors right there. Uh-oh, missed assignment there. All the way to the other end. Oh, he instead of taking the shot, he uh, tried to pass it. Andrew Yoder corralled the ball. Gonna settle it down a little bit. Elijah has it out front. Doing a clinic on dribbling. Lobs it inside to Andrew. He gets hammered as he goes up for the shot. I think it's probably gonna be called on Mosier. No, actually it's gonna be called on uh, Stolman. Stolman again. So Stolman picks up his second and Andrew Yoder will be shoot shooting a couple. 2.34 to go here in the first half. When you're turning your house into a home, your furniture plays a big part. I guess we're getting uh, that, that commercial's a little trigger happy there, getting ready to jump in on us. Back into the lineup, uh, Norm and Renz, uh, Norm Miller and Rensberger come back in. Andrew missed them both. Lucas Yoder chases down the offensive board, passes it out to Andrew, looking inside. Tried to hand it off to Rensberger, picked off by Mosier from behind. He quickly brings it down the other way. Now he's driving all the way to the baseline, goes up strong, misses the shot, but Barheit there to finish up, clean it up, and put it down for West Noble, 32-14. Coming up on the last two minutes of the half, this is always a critical point in the game to finish out strong. I know it's a big importance of Coach Yoder to how you finish a half as well as start it. But the last two minutes is a lot telling with the uh, momentum going into the second half. Wesley looking like to be very comfortable or just taking some time off the clock. Andrew drives, three guys on the floor. Foul called, so Andrew will be shooting a couple free throws again. Is that bar height maybe that, no, it's gonna be on Porter. Porter. That's his third. So Andrew back at the stripe. He had made. That is our 14th made free throw so far this game. Makes that one, 33-14, pushes that lead out to 19. Andrew gets ready, sends the second one on its way, and off the back of the rim again, that's the second one he's missed that way. He's only made one of his last four attempts, that's really unusual. Andrew just stole the ball. They say he got a part of his arm. So Andrew gets called for that foul. Going to pick up his second, and that'll put uh, Donnelly at the line to shoot one in the bonus. Collier coming back in, coming in for Andrew. I guess you don't want to have him get a third foul here in the first half yet. It's probably a back. smart play there with the lead you have and yeah. get him out of there. And so Donnelly, I think, might be the shortest guy on the floor. Takes a shot. Bounces around, no good. Collier with the rebound. Quickly down court comes Hales. Looking inside, nothing there. He's like tantalizing them with that ball. <laughs> they think they're going to get it, and then it just disappears. That is his greatest asset. He has that ball <laughs> on a string right now. <laughs> just, yeah, it's amazing what he does with that thing. Looking to push it inside. Norman Miller up top. Hales over on the left side. Lucas down in the corner, back to Hales, cross to Norm. Lucas open underneath, but nobody to get it to him. Cross to Collier. Collier drives the baseline, getting ready to push it back out. Porter just picked up his fourth foul 
Oh, yep. Oh, yeah, here he comes. I thought maybe he yeah, wasn't going to come call it. Going on Bar Harley here. Oh, okay. Porter's not even out there. <laughs> that would have been quite a trick if he'd have picked up a foul while he's on sitting the on bench. the bench. Yeah, that's Barhart second. Collier drains that one. So what'd you say we had? That's 15. That was 15 made free throws now. 15 of our 34 points coming from the free throw line. One three, I think, so far, and hits the second one as well. And that time we did not press, although he made a free throw. I wonder if they forgot. We were 16 for 22 I have on the line right now. It's <laughs> a pretty good start amazing. Too. That's amazing for one, the first, first half. First half. Donnelly hits a little jumper on the right side. 16 to 35, Westview still up. Underneath the norm, he tries to put it up, gets ball the half. Playing catch out front. And Wes Noble sitting in the zone here. Or I guess, what are they doing? No, they, now they switched to man. Or maybe they were in man. No, they're not. I'm not sure what they're doing. They're travel underneath, trying to hear. Uh, text your answer for tonight's uh, trivia question to 260 and Emma Cafe and Catering. Uh, since we have Adam Christner here with us, what I'd like to know is what's the furthest we made it into the state tournament while he was playing here at Westview. He, he played on the varsity for four years. Tell me how far the furthest we made it into the state tournament while he was here. Text that 260-463-6505. We'll be right back. This is Westview Warrior Basketball on LaguanaMedia.com. Yeah. Topeka Do It Best Hardware at the Blinker Light in Topeka is your authorized Maytag, Whirlpool, and Amana dealer. Topeka Do It Best has been selling appliances and providing service to the Topeka area for over 40 years. See JJ for your appliance parts. If they're not in stock, no problem. Topeka Do It Best will have them the next business day. Topeka Do It Best Hardware provides in-store repairs, and they make house calls. If it's worth doing, do it best. Call 593-2973. When you're turning your house into a home, your furniture plays a big part in the finished product. And you'll love the finished products at Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana. Come see the Weaver family. They'll work with you to find a piece that meets your needs or have it custom built just for you. Weaver Furniture Sales is located just south of 5 and 20 in Shipshawana. Or visit their website at weaverfurniturasales.com. All right, for uh, first half scoring for the Warriors, we'll start off with Elijah Hales with seven for us, Cody Collier with five, Andrew Yoder leading the way with 12, and Josh Hosteller actually with eight early first half points, and Nick Rinsberger ringing it out with two points. 
Um, the Warriors uh, finished the half at 35. Um, for the scoring for the Chargers, leading the way is Grant Mosier with seven. You have Walker Donnelly with two. Larry Nicholson with four. Colton Peterson with two. Cade Barheit with two. And Evan Porter with four to bring the Chargers to 21. So a 35-21 halftime lead for the Warriors. A good start off for the it's game. A good start, but we our, our first half we outscored them by 11. What was it, 17-6? Yeah. Second half we we still won the quarter, but not by not quite not as quite convincing as much. Play. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it starts on the defensive end with the Warriors. That's they they came out playing well in defense and getting a couple offensive rebounds and uh, what we counted what 16 for 22 at the free throw line. 16 of our 35 points. Yeah, that's well, a, yeah, that's a. That's a nice uh, figure to be able to put up there for you know no time coming off the clock, get yep. 16 points. Um, when you mentioned something about Josh Hostetler having eight points already, that actually ties his career high that, for a game. And that was actually just the last game uh, at East Side. We didn't talk about that much, but uh, or actually we didn't talk about it at all at the start of the tonight's broadcast. But if you weren't, didn't see the East Side game, uh, we had several guys step up and score that normally don't score a lot. Our leading scorers were Norm Miller, Lucas Yoder, and Andrew Yoder. They each had 10. All three of them had 10. Uh, obviously, we're used to seeing Andrew's name up there, yeah. but not Norm Miller or Lucas Yoder. And then the next uh, highest was uh, Josh Hostetler with eight. So had That's other guys step up and help out. It's that, a, that is a key to a good basketball team, having balance scoring across the board. Uh, the, the more those young guys start filling in and getting their eight to 10 points, that's going to help Andrew out and score his his 15 to 20 points. Right now, Andrew's averaging close to 19 points a game, um, but the more the other guys can step up, like Josh, that helps him out. Well, if, if they don't score, it means they're going to double and triple team the guys yep. that are scoring. And uh, it always, always makes me nervous when I see that it looks like somebody's been told don't shoot. He's wide open and he's not shooting. It's like I'm, I'm thinking, boy, if I'm the other coach, I'm immediately going to say, Phew. Let him, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's that's drop a, off. Yeah, it's a key point. I mean, if you get the guys scoring around Andrew, then the other team is going to who are you going to guard? And yeah. that's um, that's a sign of a good team. And I, with the youth of the West for the Warriors, it's just going to take time. Yeah. Um, so. You just got we got to remember that the kids are young and <laughs> they, they, yeah. they're going to take their bumps and bruises. I mean, I remember playing as a freshman, and yeah, I, um, I remember you I playing was, as a freshman. Yeah, yeah. maybe 120 <laughs> pounds and. Um, it's a different game. Uh, the, yeah, the guys have had a good career going up to the varsity, but when you're going with guys that are three, four years older than you, right. it's and, a different maturity and, and, level. And experience. I mean, yeah. the, the one thing I keep saying, though, I've said it before, is you know, the, the, the big thing is they're getting a lot of experience this year playing against older guys, whereas most of their classmates at the other schools are playing freshman teams yeah. and, or maybe JV. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're getting that, you know, in two, two or three years down the road, we're, we're going to have three years of experience yeah. under our belts and and the other you know, varsity you, experience. Yeah, so. that experience is huge. I, I like I said, I I've, I helped coach with John Jancy last year with the eighth grade with these kids, um, and the level of progress they've made has been been great, and it's just going to keep going. Um, but it, it just takes time, and it's hard sometimes, especially as Warrior fans, we're used to having some success and everything. And it's been kind of a roller coaster year. We look back at Prairie yeah. Heights and yeah. had a tough, oh. tough, tough game going there. Going a whole quarter at the end of the game, giving up a 12-point lead, losing it's, by four or five. That's rough. It's, it is tough, but it, and again, it, you just gotta keep thinking back. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process, and that's what I'd like to see with these kids. They've, they've grown like Josh tonight, eight points. That's a, that's, that's a great job stepping up. Right. Yeah. And of course, yeah, he had started splitting his, started the season splitting his time between JV and varsity. And now he's just entirely on the varsity. He's not playing JV at all anymore. Uh, seems like he is getting more playing time than two on the varsity. So that's, that's good to see. So, yeah. Just practice well, time and everything. So it's good. We'll take a break. Uh, thanks Adam Christner for helping out. No problem. 2009 grad, uh, Started, did you start as a freshman? I did. Yeah, I was going to say, I was thinking you did. I knew you played as a freshman. I was pretty sure you had started. Yeah. So, uh, started for four years for Westview and uh, back helping coach now and uh, helping out on the air tonight. So, thanks a lot. Jerry Hosteller has made it back, so he's going to pick up on the play by play. But yep. uh, I appreciate you having me. It's a good time. All right. Thanks, Adam. Right. We'll be right back. This is Westview Warrior Basketball on LaguanaMedia.com. 
Dale's Dependable Handyman Service provides handyman repairs and remodeling to the surrounding LaGrange County area, including Goshen, Middlebury, Albion, Kendallville, and Angola. If you're looking to update your kitchen, sometimes it's as simple as changing countertops and adding tile and glass backsplash. It can make your kitchen look brand new. Dale's Dependable Handyman Service providing quality installation with quality materials. Call Dale at 260-336-9364. At Mike's Automotive Service on Lehman Avenue in Topeka, you'll find a talented staff of mechanics to help you with all of your automotive repair needs. Brett, Adam, and Ryan are all ready to tackle your repairs on all makes and models of cars and light-duty trucks. Everything from a simple oil change and service to brakes and suspension and much more. Mike's also offers 24-hour towing service. Call or stop by Mike's Automotive in Topeka, 260-593-0434. For after-hour emergencies, call 260-350-2224. The Hometown Treasure has been covering the Topeka Shipshawana communities and the Westview schools for over 14 years. Keep up to date on area and school activities. The Hometown Treasure is a monthly publication published by Laguana Printing, featuring full-color photos and news from all six schools in the Westview school system. Also, articles written by local writers, as well as games and contests for children and adults alike. Pick up our latest issue on newsstands or check us out on Facebook or visit our website at the Hometown hometowntreasure.com. Well, we're back here at Westview High School. Both teams just coming out of the huddle. Welcome back, Jerry. Got things <laughs> taken care of at the office, I guess. I hope so. Man, what a day. It all <laughs> happened at 5 o'clock. I was going to say, it, was, it, it went all right, all right most of the day. Had a little <sighs> glitch with the automatic uh, payroll, and if people don't get their money, it's probably not a good thing. That's kind of a bad thing. Westview has the ball to begin the second half of play, 35 to 21. Hale spins inside with another quick bucket. So he has two points, right, Dan? <laughs> nine, <laughs> nine points for Hales now. All right, 37 to 21, Westview leads. West Noble with the basketball. Out front in control is uh, Grant Moser. Grant, yep. Yes, Stover yep. with the ball now. He'll go top of the key, drive the lane. Give off to Moser. Moser drives it into the paint and banks it off the glass and good. He hit a three right there before the half. Just I did just see that, yeah. Pulled up and shot. He's, I think he's starting to feel the shot. Well, he looked like it on that play because yeah. he kind of finished his shot with his arm way up in the air and with the crook wrist. Andrew Yoder drives, and he's called for traveling. I like the striped socks, Dan. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't remember those socks. I said I, the ones I remember are all white and then maybe red stripes going horizontally around the top. <laughs> I know uh, my brother wore those, and I think it was the first year of Westview. So, yeah, I remember those vaguely. It's been a while back. Moser with the ball. He'll get it out front to Walker Donley. Donley bounce pass inside to the big guy, Colton Peterson, and we have a whistle and a foul. From behind, I think the big guy, Nick Rent. Nope, they're going to call it on Cody. Yeah, Cody, Cody came down to help. Yeah, he's, he is a big guy width-wise, but they've got several guys a bit taller than him. Moser looking to inbound. He gets it in, but it's off the hands of Stover and grabbed by Hales. Elijah brings it across the timeline. He'll go left side to Collier in the corner to Nick Rensberger. Back out front to Collier. Now to Andrew Yoder down in the corner. Left side to Collier for three. There to Moser. Moser with heels on him, pops a three, and that time looked like Elijah got a little piece of it. No good. Tried to save it in bounds there was uh, Walker Donnelly, but it ricochets into the hands of Andrew Yoder. Not quite sure who would have gotten that ball if, if he wouldn't have done that. Yeah, it was, I don't know who it went off of last. Collier goes for the shot inside. Moser's going to be called for that foul. That's his second. It'll be the first on the chargers for the half and we're back at the free throw stripe for attempt number 23 wow collier's first shot is up and good collier with six points now he was all from the no um he had a three no what well, no because he's this this would make it an odd no. number if he hadn't so he's <laughs> at seven true. now so he's he is five of six from the line and has one regular bucket all right 39 to 23. I don't even think I'm going to try to catch my score. Okay. I'll just rely on you for that. Dude. All right. Driving the lane is Stover. He tries to get it inside, and it's picked up off the garbage there by <laughs> Colton Peterson, and they 
put it in. Was it uh, Nicholson that hit that? No, Porter ended up with the shot. Yeah, no, it Porter. is Nicholson. You're right. Nicholson, 35. That's the other big guy. So Nicholson with six points now, and it steps to the line to shoot one. That foul is called on Hales, his first. First on Westview for the half. Nicholson at the free throw line. 39-25, Westview leading. Now 39-26 as Nicholson completes a three-point play. Good thing he made that. I'd already filled in the circle <laughs> for a made shot. I'm not sure what I was doing there. Well, you must have been thinking ahead. <laughs> Andrew Yoder with a jumper. Good rebound by uh, Miller, but he couldn't save it inbounds. Norm tried, but right into the hands of Wes Noble. Moser, bounce pass inside. Now the lob down deep. Shots up, no good by Nicholson. Rensberger with rebound. He'll get it to Hales. Hales takes it left side. Now to Norm. Out front to Elijah. Now to Cody Collier. Right side to Andrew Yoder. Yeah, I looked up at the scoreboard when I came in the gym, and we had a nice, comfortable lead. Driving is Norman, and it's knocked out of bounds. It'll be Westview ball underneath their own bucket. Big thank you to Adam Christner for stepping in. Yeah. Got Rensberger and uh, Hostetler checking back in. Bra uh, oh, sorry, Brandon Burger. Bur Brandenburger. <laughs> Rensberger's coming out. I've done that twice now tonight. tonight. I used your line at east side. Oh, okay. In your absence, the Burger Burger swap. Hales oh. gets the, will they give him no, the bucket? No, they yeah. said it was on the floor. Nice move inside, though. It was beautiful. He's been doing a lot of that tonight and loving seeing of that driving hard to the basket. That foul is going to be called on Walker Donnelly, his second. Two on Chargers for the half. Hales to Josh Hostetler, to Collier, to Brandon Berger. Now to Hales, reverse layup. He tried it again. This time it's knocked out of bounds on a block. It'll be Westview's ball once again. No foul this time. Just knocked out of bounds there by the big guy, Larry Nicholson, 6'5". Hales inbounding to the right of the Westview basket. The lob comes in to Andrew Yoder. Bounce pass, good job of getting it between the West Noble defense, but it's stripped away from Collier, and coming up with a steal was little Donnelly, 5'6". And he's not very wide either. Nope. Just, and he is really little out there. Moser, and we have a whistle on a reach-in foul. It's going to be called on the baseline as Nicholson drove toward the basket. If that's Andrew, that'll be his third, and it is. So Andrew picks up his third three on Westview for the half. 4.32 to go here in the third period. We've got Stolman checking back in, coming in for uh, Peterson for Chargers. West Noble struggling this year, 3-11 and 11 coming into tonight's ball game. Trailing here, 39-26. to 26. Timeout is called by Jim Best, the West Noble coach. We'll be back after this. At Mike's Automotive Service on Lehman Avenue in Topeka, you'll find a talented staff of mechanics to help you with all of your automotive repair needs. Brett, Adam, and Ryan are all ready to tackle your repairs on all makes and models of cars and light duty truck. Everything from a simple oil change and service to brakes and suspension and much more. Mike's also offers 24 hour towing service. Call or stop by Mike's Automotive in Topeka, 260-593-0434. For after hour emergencies, call 260-350-2224. And we're back. Ready to resume action after the timeout called by Wes Noble and they'll be inbound and Grant Moser will Inbound right over in front of Dean Christner across the court from us. Moser gets it back. He'll drive. Puts it up, and it's going to be short. Partially blocked there. Hales with the ball. He'll give it to Andrew Yoder. In transition. Collier will put it up off the baseline under the basket. Misses, but he's fouled. It'll be a two-shot foul coming for Cody. Just realized I'm trying to get you caught up here on the scoring, and you have your names on here in a different order than I do. <laughs> yeah, I got the guys <laughs> that play most up at the top. Sorry, okay. Dave. <laughs> Appreciate I'll, you doing I'll, that. I'll figure this out. Collier's shot is up and good. They've been pretty much living at the free throw line, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, they have. Collier, well, yeah, he's, this is his fourth shot this half, and he had four in the first half, so eight attempts from the line already for him. Second shot's up and swishes through. 41 to 26. Oh, yeah, now I, since I'm caught up, I can. Yeah. 
shot inside. We have an offensive foul that's going to be called on uh, the big guy Nicholson inside, and he was. I think he spun around, and I think he might have hooked as he went around, knocked Brandenburger down, so he picks up his fourth foul. In disgust, he kind of threw the ball away, but uh, the officials didn't see it, I don't think. They don't Very like that normally. He might have been out of the game. Yeah, Hales with the ball. And now we have a technical foul is going to be called on the bench. Evidently, he was hearing it. The official was hearing it from head coach Jim Best and didn't like what he heard. Well, I, just before that, he had sort of looked back and, and sort of motioned down with his hand. I think he's telling him to be quiet, and apparently he wasn't quiet, and so he said, well, that's enough of that, <laughs> so it teed him up. We haven't and seen very many this now year. Now, I'm trying to remember, does that count as the team total? I know on if, the it's, bench, if it's... I if think it's, it is. Yeah, they, yeah, and they just moved it up. Yeah, yep. so now we're at five, five fouls for the team. Josh Hostetler missed that second shot. Hit, it hit his so, first. But. Yeah, so Josh just set a new uh, all-time high for himself. He had eight at east side. That was his personal best for a game, and now he's just moved up to nine for tonight. Good for Josh, the freshman. Had eight in the first, first, uh, four, uh, first half. Of course, with the technical foul, we'll get the ball back as well. Potential could could have been a five-point play. Ball stolen on the inbound pass and driving it down and putting it up strongly was Tim Stolman. His first two of the night. Andrew Yoder almost had it stolen again. J Josh Ostetler to uh, Elijah Hills. He'll get it to Collier. He'll put it up off the glass. No good. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Westview. It'll be West Noble ball. Think, Becoming uh, a physical game, it looks I like. Brandenburg and Hostetler both trying to get to the ball, and they got in each other's way. Lucas Yoder coming back in, Collier out. Andrew Yoder putting on some pressure in the backcourt. Now we have a whistle and a blocking foul is going to be called on Elijah Hales as Moser tried to drive on him. Well, he, uh, Hales is just half a, half a quarter step too late getting set. <laughs> Moser just drove him down the floor on his back. They look pretty physical. I think it's looking more physical here in the second half than it had been in the first. Even with all the fouls, huh? Yeah. Just, yeah, I was surprised to see all those fouls. Stover drives. And we have a elbow. It's going to be an offensive and foul. That's going to be called on Porter, and that'll be his fourth. The other 6'5 guy from, from uh, West Noble, and I guess, yeah, well, yeah, so it's an offensive foul. It's going to be considered a turnover. 42 to 28, 323 now to go in the third quarter. Westview with the ball and big lead. Andrew Yoder driving the lane, has it knocked away. It goes off the knee of Andrew and out of bounds. It'll be West Noble ball. I'm wondering what the reasoning is right now. They have Andrew bringing the ball down the floor and Elijah's down at the other end. Yeah, you're They've right. done it a couple of times down the floor. Maybe they want the veteran ball handling skills of Andrew. Or in maybe there. they just want to make sure Andrew still knows how to do that. <laughs> well, that could be. Shot taken from three-point lands, no good. And on the rebound, uh, Evan Porter went up for it. Now, but I think the, I think the the foul was away from the ball, and they are calling Andrew. That'll be his fourth. I didn't I didn't even see what happened there. Cody Collier quickly set to check back in for him. I assume. Also, uh, Colton Peterson back in for Wes Noble. Porter comes out. Inbounding will be Moser. Just lays it into Colton Peterson. Misses a shot, gets his own rebound, and lays it in. Peterson now with four. 42 to 30. 12 point lead for the Warriors. What was it at halftime? Uh, at halftime, it was 35 12. We were up 14. At uh, tw uh, 21. 35 21. Hales out front. 2.50 to go in the third quarter. He'll get it to Brandenburger. Brandenburger gets it to Collier. Collier left side to Hales. Back out front to Cody. This will be a test to see if Westview can hang on to a, a lead. They've and a pass into Brandenburger, wide open, and Jansen just lays it in. Missed a couple, you know, lost a couple leads late in games earlier this season. We're up 14 now, 44 to 30. Shot by Moser down the baseline is good off the right side. 
Was that Moser? Yes, it was. 44. I just realized I'm, I'm forgetting to keep track of scoring myself. Oh. <laughs> got myself all flubbed up by help uh, by doing play-by-play -play earlier. <laughs> I discovered I can't do, I can't keep my score and do play-by-play, -play, and now I forgot I went back to doing color. <laughs> you flirt, you've seen me do the same thing. <laughs> I usually can keep score pretty well, but not fouls necessarily. 30-second timeout, and we'll be back right after this. Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana has been serving the Michiana area for over 25 years. At Weaver Furniture Sales, you'll find a large selection of mattresses, recliners, grandfather clocks, and much more. And during the Christmas holiday season, you'll find many pieces specially marked. Pick a piece off of the showroom floor or have it custom made at Weaver Furniture Sales just south of 5 and 20 in Shipshawana. Serving Michiana families for over 25 years. Weaver Furniture Sales, a proud supporter of Westview basketball. We're back at Westview High School, ready to resume action now. West Noble coming out of their huddle. Westview already out on the floor. Kind of sorry I missed the festivities earlier. Uh, it's alumni night here at Westview as we're yeah. celebrating the 50th anniversary of Westview High School. That's kind of nice. Two of my classmates won the door prizes. Oh, okay. Pass inside to Collier from Hales on the inbound pass, and Cody hits. Is that 10? 11 for 11. Him. Okay, I'm missing one. 46-32. Driving with Stover. He gets it back to Donnelly, and he'll bank it off the glass. Donnelly's not very tall, but he's fearless in there. Hales driving all the way down. Puts it up and got the roll. 11 for Hales now. 48-34, Moser brings it down, trying to drive on Hales, does, puts it up, scores, but I think they, oh, they're gonna count the basket. Thought he might have fouled him before he went up for the shot. It's gonna be called on Hales, it's gonna be his third. So Moser to the stripe. Rensberger, okay, is that a, oh, that's right, he made the shot, so. I think he's, he scored like 10 points. No, no. Shot off the back of the rim, no good, so he can't convert the old-fashioned three-point play. Hales gets it up to Josh O'Settler, back to Hales on the wing right side. Up front to Brandenburger. Good pass inside to Josh. He fakes, puts it up, and he's hammered. It's going to be called on Mosier. Mosier's second foul. Seven on the team now. 48-36, 108 to go in the third quarter. Westview leads it. Josh Hostetler at the stripe. He has two. No, he's got nine tonight, as Dan said. Now he's got ten as he keeps increasing his high total for uh, his career. Young career. Yes, another one of the freshmen. Second shot up and good again for Josh. Back come the West Noble Chargers now. Mason Stover with the ball out front. Looks right side, goes that way and a bounce pass to Donnelly. Donnelly brings it out front on the dribble. Left side comes to Stover with it. Stover being grand, uh, guarded by Brandenburger. He drives it all the way to the basket and they're gonna count that one. That's Stover's first points of the night. Brandenburger will pick up his, I think that's only his second. Mason Stover, a sophomore, 5'10", at the charity stripe, trying to complete the three-point play, and he does. And it's going to be called off because... It's on the uh, line. Peterson, no, Peterson oh. crossed, crossed. He was in there before he ever released the shot. <laughs> He's trying to get a quick step in there. He did, <laughs> but it was illegal. A little bit too quick. Hales across the timeline, being hawked there by Donnelly. He'll go left side of Collier in the corner to Josh Hostetler. They feed Rensberger inside. Good, strong move. Turnaround jumpers, no good, but he's fouled. I'll give Nick two from the stripe. The foul's going to be called on Stolman, his third, I believe. Rensberger, Rensberger yeah. two points. Yeah, only two points so far tonight. This is the first. He'll get one more. Nick had his high game against uh, Hamilton, 12 points. Yeah, earlier in the season against Busco, he'd had 11. Hits that second one. Oh, <laughs> Norman just checked in, and he, he just about ran out on the floor. <laughs> it's not practice. And, uh, yeah, there's no dead ball. So. All right. Moser 
Gets it out front, driving is Donley. Gets it into the corner, shots up and short there by Tim Stolman. And back up the Warriors, Collier drives, puts it up, misses, but he's fouled. It'll be a two-shot foul coming for Cody. <laughs> now normal check-in. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was all about. A coach sent him back to the bench after he almost walked out there. So Cody Collier back at the line to shoot a couple. He has two, four, six, seven points from the stripe tonight already. This is that one. So seven of nine right now. Now Norm comes in. Okay, who's going to be the ball handler? Andrew yeah. and Hales both out. This should be interesting. Nick Rensburg. There we go. <laughs> Get the big guy it's out there. This is the misses. second shot. Wow. Unusual for Cody. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Cody. It'll be West Noble ball. Inbounding is Walker Donnelly, and Moser chases it down. He'll go right side, then we have a foul on Norm. Or no, no, it's going to be called foul. on Stover. He stuck his leg over there to try to stop him. Stover picks up his first. Norm comes out, hails back in. Josh Hostetler in, or Josh Hostetler will be inbounding. Eight seconds to go in the third quarter. 51-38. Hales drives it, fakes, puts it up, has it blocked away by Moser. He'll throw it up at the buzzer, and it hits the left side of the backboard. No good. And we played three quarters now from Westview, and our score, Westview 51 and West Noble 38. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right after this. Dale's Dependable Handyman Service provides handyman repairs and remodeling to the surrounding LaGrange County area, including Goshen, Middlebury, Albion, Kendallville, and Angola. If you're looking to update your kitchen, sometimes it's as simple as changing countertops and adding tile and glass backsplash. It can make your kitchen look brand new. Dale's Dependable Handyman Service providing quality installation with quality materials. Call Dale at 260-336-9364. Topeka Do It Best Hardware at the Blinker Light in Topeka is your authorized Maytag, Whirlpool, and Amana dealer. Topeka Do It Best has been selling appliances and providing service to the Topeka area for over 40 years. See JJ for your appliance parts. If they're not in stock, no problem. Topeka Do It Best will have them the next business day. Topeka Do It Best Hardware provides in-store repairs, and they make house calls. If it's worth doing, do it best. Call 593-2973. And we're back at Westview. West Noble will have the ball first. They'll be inbounding to begin the fourth quarter. Moser inbounding. He'll get it, he'll get it into Donnelly. Tomorrow night we'll be back down at Central Noble to bring you the semifinals of the Central Noble section. It'll be Westview, the Lady Warriors, and Fremont's Lady Eagles. Donnelly with a long shot. He's going to get three, three shots from the free throw line as he was fouled beyond the arc. Fortunately, the basket didn't fall. Collier tried to get out there in time and didn't get stopped quite soon enough. Three Cody Collier, Cody. Yeah, picks up his third. That's eight on Westview now. So just barely into the fourth quarter, we're in the double bonus situation. I mean, with uh, West Noble having 10 team fouls, and they're almost there as well. We have eight. Donnelly hits that first free throw. So he has five, and now six, and he'll get one more. 51 to 40, Westview by 11. Third shot for Donnelly from the charity stripe is good. Nothing but net. 51-41 now, a 10-point lead for the Warriors. Hales across the timeline. Donnelly on him out front. He'll go right side to Brandenburger, back out front to Hales. You just realize what we have on the floor right now? All freshmen. All freshmen. Every last one of them. Hales takes it down low, then brings it back out. Elijah Hales, Josh Hosteller, Nick Rensberger, Cody Collier, and... J Jansen Brandenburger. Hales goes to Nick Rensberger. Back out front now to Hales. 7-10 to go in the ball game. Hales backs it out. 
Now to Josh. Down low pass comes to Collier. He'll fake, put it up, scores. Oh, we got an offensive foul. I guess I'm, they. I'm not even sure he saw Donnelly in there. Lowered his shoulder, and I think that's where they got him. Four now for Collier. 51 41, Westview by 10. Walker Donnelly goes right side with a pass to Luke Moore. He goes down low to the big guy Nicholson, and it's knocked out of bounds by Josh Ostetler in a combination there with Brandenburger. Grant Mosier will inbound. He'll get it in to Nicholson. Nicholson out front to Luke Moore on the wing. Back to Nicholson, ball tried to be passed down low to Cade Barhide, but it was stolen away. Westview with the ball. Brandenburger out front. Tries to lob it into Collier too low, and it's knocked away, and coming up with a loose ball is Donnelly. Walker Donnelly goes left side, fakes, and gets it out of trouble out front to Luke Moore. Now to Nicholson. Nicholson to Moore, and he misses the long range three. Brandenburger with a rebound, outlet pass to Hales, and back come the Warriors. Elijah drives, puts it up, and <laughs> spins it in off the glass. 13 for Elijah. Elijah one away from his high, 14 against Busco. Moser's shot misses, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by West Noble. It'll be Westview's ball. Andrew Yoder back in, so we're back to having an upperclassman on the floor. Brandenburger out. They did a nice job while they were in there. Four, four freshmen and one senior now. Hales across the timeline. 5.50 to go in the game. Collier with the ball now to Rensberger. Right side to Josh Ostetler. He bounce passes it to Hales. Hales out front to Collier. They'll swing it around to Andrew Yoder. Now to Josh Ostetler. Back out front to Andrew Yoder. Now to Hales. He drives it down to the right wing and then pulls it back out front. He'll try to drive it. No hurry here for the Warriors. They're up by 12, 53 to 41. Rensberger. Two Hales, 5.15 to go. Hales drives again, puts it up, and scores. And he sees a seam, and he just attacks it tonight. I love it. 15 for Hales. Like I always say, we're going to see a lot of that in the next four, three and a half years here. Driving toward the hole looked like a travel before, but we're going to give uh, Cade Barhide two shots. He was fouled. He called on Rensberger to pick up his third. And yeah, you weren't here during the JV game, but this uh, Barhide kid uh, played, I think maybe two quarters in the JV game, and then he started on the varsity. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He wasn't even listed on the JV roster, so. Oh. I mean, he just played the last, either the last one or two quarters, and he definitely made a big difference in there for them. <laughs> well, I'm sure he did. 6-5, playing on the, the JV. Soft, as a sophomore. Yeah. Second shot's up, no good, misses them both. Josh Ostetler to Andrew Yoder to Elijah Hales. Hales out front. Gets a pick from Collier. Goes right side to Andrew Yoder. Andrew drives it into the lane and gives out to Rensberger. Rensberger drives strong toward the hole. He'll put it up, have it stuffed back at him by Barheide. It goes out of bounds. It'll be Westview ball. Norm Miller comes in for Collier. Collier has four fouls. 4.44 to go in the fourth. Hales gets it into Norm now to Andrew, back to Hales. Hales with the ball. He'll go to Andrew Yoder, fakes the three, goes to Hales, left side. He'll drive it all the way to the hole again, have it rejected underneath by Nicholson, but into the hands of Andrew Yoder. Now to Rensberger to Norm Miller. With the ball now is Elijah Hales out front. 4.20 to go in the game. Andrew drives it, and we have a foul. As Andrew drove toward the basket, he was fouled by the charger there. Bar height, I believe. Yep, 43. And that'll be his fourth, uh, third, only his third. Lucas Yoder getting set to check in. Yeah, so every foul from here on out is going to be a two-shot foul, unless you make the, free, uh, make the shot, I guess. And Andrew Yoder adds to his totals. 13 now for Andrew for the night. Andrew came in with an 18.8 point per game average. Hits them both. Timeout called by West Noble. 
And we'll take a break here as well. This is Westview Warrior Basketball at LaguanaMedia.com. Tiffany's Restaurant in Topeka is a proud supporter of Westview Basketball. Tiffany's on East Lake Street in Topeka features weekly specials, including all-you-can-eat fish on Wednesday evening, their delicious baby back ribs on Thursday night, and on Friday night, enjoy their mouth-watering prime rib. On Friday and Saturday evenings, stop in and enjoy Tiffany's Buffet. If you can't dine in, carryout is always available at Tiffany's Restaurant in Topeka. Open Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Call 593-2988. When you're turning your house into a home, your furniture plays a big part in the finished product. And you'll love the finished products at Weaver Furniture Sales in Chipshawana. Come see the Weaver family. They'll work with you to find a piece that meets your needs or have it custom built just for you. Weaver Furniture Sales is located just south of 5 and 20 in Chipshawana or visit their website at weaverfurniturasales.com. What a mess. And we're back. 4.18 to go in the fourth quarter. Westview with a 57-41 lead. They managed to push that back out when they had down to 10 a little bit ago. 41-51. Scored the last six points. Now. Well, we certainly didn't lose any uh, with having the freshman no, out there. No, I don't think so. Mosier with the ball, right wing, drives on heels, bounce pass inside. Shot is up and off the glass and good by Nicholson. Nicholson now at nine. With the ball as Hales out front for Westview. Elijah has it knocked away, but a reach-in foul is going to be called on Mosier. That's going to be his third. 13 points was his best output, and that was against Busco, third game of the season. Luke Moore gets it out front to Donnelly. Donnelly back to Moore. Moore looking for help. He'll finally hit Nicholson. Now the right side pass comes to Donnelly. Donnelly high post right side, hands it off to Mosier. Moser takes it down the baseline. He's met by Rensburger. Good defense by Nick. And that's Hales that comes out with it. Elijah down the lane, puts it up, has it blocked away, but he got it in the forehead by Barhide. And if that's Barhide, that's his fifth. Nope, it's on Moore. That's his first. <laughs> Look guilty. Hales just drained another one. Looking pretty comfortable up there tonight. 18 now for Elijah. 7.8 coming in. 9 of 10 from the stripe. 61-43, 3 minutes and 20 seconds to go in this ball game. Westview leading. Timeout on the court. We'll be back after this. At Mike's Automotive Service on Lehman Avenue in Topeka, you'll find a talented staff of mechanics to help you with all of your automotive repair needs. Brett, Adam, and Ryan are all ready to tackle your repairs on all makes and models of cars and light duty trucks. Everything from a simple oil change and service to brakes and suspension and much more. Mike's also offers 24 hour towing service. Call or stop by Mike's Automotive in Topeka 260-593-0434 for after hour emergencies call 260-350-2224. And we're back. Good to have you aboard. Don't forget tomorrow night like to see you down at Central Noble for that semifinal game. It should be a good one. Fremont and Westview in the ladies sectional. First game of the night should be sort of an interesting one too. Two 18 and six teams, Whitco and um, Central Noble. Yeah, it'd be a good night to see a double header down there. Ball shot, no good, it goes <laughs> out of bounds. And <laughs> they were both fighting to, for position and nobody ever touched the ball. It just bounced and went out. And it, Came out in Westview's favor, so we'll take it. Hales to Norm Miller across the timeline. Norm back to Hales with three minutes to go now in the ball game. 61-43, Westview with the lead. Hales out front, tries to drive on Donnelly, gives it off to Lucas Yoder. Back to Hales out front, now to Andrew Yoder. Andrew puts it on the court a couple times and hands it off to Norm Miller there. He'll give to Lucas Yoder. The lob inside to Rensberger. He tried to feed it, I think, to Andrew Yoder and got kicked out of bounds by Wes Noble. Burger, burger, swap. Nick out. Jansen in. Nick gets a handshake from his head coach, Rob Yoder. 
Hales gets it into Andrew Yoder. He'll drive it into the lane, give off to Norm Miller, and we have a foul. I don't know whether that's going to be a shooting foul. Maybe well, so. It doesn't matter. It's a two shot no. either way. <laughs> yep, you're right. Foul is going to be called on Mosier. That'll be his fourth. A lot of fouls called tonight. So far, nobody's fouled out. 2.36 left in the game. I guess there's still time. Norm's first point of the night as he hits his first free throw. Second shot up, short, no good. West Noble pull it, pulls it down. Two and a half minutes now to go in the game. 62-43, Westview by 19. Inside, it's going to be a foul underneath. Nicholson will be shooting two. He'll be called on Brandenburger. His second. Nicholson looking, looked pretty comfortable with the line earlier. It's three for three so far from the strike tonight. Yeah, good job, I can, man. I can jinx them just as well <laughs> as us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least you're fair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do it to everybody. Yeah. Second one misses. And Barhide chases down a rebound, but got it caught up on his shoulder and traveled. Jansen helped him out a little bit there, sort of poked it loose on him, and then he couldn't quite control it. Norm gets it into Elijah. Gets it across the timeline. We go left side to Andrew Yoder. And we have a whistle, a foul on Donley as Andrew tried to drive around him. Sam Sharp and Jeremiah Hostetler are getting set to check in. A couple sophomores get, play a lot on the uh, JV team. Back. Those two are going to see a lot of playing time too, probably in the next few years. Second shot, or the first shot from the line by Hales is off the back of the iron, no good. So I did jinx him too, didn't I? Yes, you did. So they come in for the upperclassmen, so down to freshmen and sophomores. Oh, no, we got Lucas in there as a junior. Shot by Hale, just barely hits the rim. <laughs> he knew it as soon as he released it. Mosier, he'll drive it, give off to Moore. Moore to the free throw line, tries okay. to go right side with it, and it's off the hand of Walker Donnelly and out of bounds. Mima inbounds to Elijah. We go right side to Sharp, back to Hales. Bounce pass to Mima. Minute 45 seconds now to go in the game. Looks like I just got Mima's here. Mima's got a 6'5 guy on him. <laughs> that's a little <laughs> bit, well, now they've switched, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, he's, poor guy's not going to be able to keep up with Mima. You're right, it's not fair. <laughs> Lucas Yoder lost possession as he bounced it off the shins of one of the West Noble Chargers. Moore with the three-pointer and he hits. It's his first points of the ball game. 62-46. Foul called on the inbounds. It's going to be on Mosier, so he'll pick up his fifth. I think he just fouled out. So Brandon Mosier, been watching play for the last four years. Oh, sorry, not Brandon, Grant Mosier. Was there a Brandon Moser before? I think maybe there was. Yeah, there I was. I think I, a I've done that a couple team. times tonight. I've, I've called him the wrong thing. So he finishes with 13 points tonight for the Chargers. He is their leading scorer right now. Nicholson comes out also. A minute yes. 17 to go. Jim Best starts to unload his bench. Daniel Wiley, a 5'6 junior. Hales hits his free throw this time. 20 now for Elijah. Great game for him, and a lot Man. of it's come from drives to the bucket. I mean, if he didn't score there, he scored on a lot of free throws tonight. He pumps in the second free throw. 64-46, Westview by 18. Three-pointer, in, or I guess he was inside the line. No good by uh, 21. I don't have him on my score sheet. Well, I don't either. Let's see if there's a, I wonder if it's Trevor Franklin. Is he about 5'10"? Sounds about right. I think car height oh. just fouled out. Our bar height, not car height. That'll be all for bar height. Well, maybe it's only four. 
Oh, yeah, I was looking at the wrong number up top. It's only his fourth. Brandenburger's shot rolls in. That'll be three for Jansen tonight. Actually, I think it's four. I might have Is missed it? that for you. He did have one first half point. You had him in the wrong spot on the sheet. <laughs> That's what it was. I'm going to blame that. Yeah. That's all right. Sharp gets it out front to Hales. 45 seconds to go in the game. 65-46. Brandenburger, he'll drive. Put it up off the glass off the baseline. Six for him. Might have knocked the ball loose. There. Yes, he did. Went off his foot. That's uh, Donnelly. Westview with it back. Hales with the ball now. 25 seconds to go. He'll go to Brandenburger. Back to Hales out front. Westview will just hold it and run out the clock here. With a nice conference win over West Noble tonight. Don't forget, I'll remind you again, tomorrow night we'll be down at Central Noble. It'll be the second game tomorrow night that Westview will be involved in. That'll do it from here from Westview as the Westview Warriors defeat the West Noble Chargers by a score of 67 to 46. And Dan will be back with game stats and scoring right after this. From Jamestown to Jonesville, from North Salem to South Milford, from River Forest to Grass Creek. No matter where you live in Indiana, you can enjoy high school sports coverage at its very best on the IHSAA Champions Network. Presented by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance. It's 35 powerhouse radio stations, Fox Sports Indiana, and the World Wide Web. Combining their vast resources to blanket the state, the Midwest, and the world with the purest, most riveting presentation of high school sports in America. From Anderson to Attica, Kendallville to Kokomo, follow the high school sports that make our state great all season long. Thank you, Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, and welcome home. The Hometown Treasure has been covering the Topeka, Shipshawana communities and the Westview schools for over 14 years. Keep up to date on area and school activities. The Hometown Treasure is a monthly publication published by Laguana Printing, featuring full-color photos and news from all six schools in the Westview school system. Also, articles written by local writers, as well as games and contests for children and adults alike. Pick up our latest issue on newsstands or check us out on Facebook or visit our website at the hometowntreasure.com. Topeka Do It Best Hardware at the Blinker Light in Topeka is your authorized Maytag, Whirlpool, and Amana dealer. Topeka Do It Best has been selling appliances and providing service to the Topeka area for over 40 years. See JJ for your appliance parts. If they're not in stock, no problem. Topeka Do It Best will have them the next business day. Topeka Do It Best Hardware provides in-store repairs, and they make house calls. If it's worth doing, do it best. Call 593-2973. And we're back here at Westview High School as they celebrate picking up uh, conference win number four, four and five in the conference now, eight and nine overall, as they defeated the visiting Chargers from West Noble, 67-46 tonight. Westview played a pretty consistent game uh, if you look at the scoring by quarter, we scored 17, 18, 16, and 16 uh, in the in. So you know, just real consistent. And uh, West Noble on the other side went 6, 15, 17, and 8. So they they stayed with us in the center two quarters, but uh, got outscored pretty badly in the first and the last. Uh, taking a look at individual stats for the visitors, Grant Moser, 6'2", senior, finished the night with 13. He fouled out with a minute 17. To go in the game. Seven points apiece for Walker Donnelly, a 5'6 a junior that came off the bench. Uh, he got some of his points. He hit three for three from the three point line after being fouled on a three point shot that he missed. Seven points also for Larry Nicholson, a 6'5 junior. Uh, four points each for Tim Stolman coming in off the bench and for Colton Peterson, as well as for Evan Porter, 6'5 senior, that one of the starters. Three points for Luke Moore. Came in right at the end of the game, 5'11 junior, and hit a three-pointer. And two points each 
for uh, Mason Stover, 5'10 sophomore starting point guard, and for uh, Cade Barhide, uh, a 6'5 sophomore, which again, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but it's sort of a weird situation. He was playing on the JV and then he started on the varsity. <laughs> so I, I'm not quite sure what the story is there, but there must be some kind of story. Uh, for Westview, led tonight by freshman Elijah Hales, had his best outing of his career. 21 points tonight. He had been averaging 7.8 points a game. So he's been he's been scoring every game, uh, but his high prior to this had been 14 against uh, Busco, although he did have 13 against West Noble when we played him back uh, in that consolation game in the um, NECC tournament. Yeah. I forgot about that. We actually we defeated them 58-44 in that contest and then tonight so that was by 14 and tonight we beat them by 21. Um, taking a look okay yeah continuing on then with the individual scoring uh, Cody Collier finished with 11 Andrew Yoder with 13 and he had 12 uh, somehow that doesn't add up quite right he has 14 somehow 12 added 12 and 2 and got 13. So 14 for Andrew Yoder 11 for Josh Hostetler who also Another freshman set a uh, personal best for himself. A personal best before that east side game. Just I'm going to have to do some quick counting here on free throws. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 14, 18, it's, uh, 18. We were 34. We got 34 points from the free throw line wow. out of 33, out of 47. So made 34, missed 13, but 47 free throw attempts tonight and we made 34 so yeah that's a that's a huge difference and I I mean if you look at West Nobles I can probably count those up real quick they got one two three four five six points from the free throw line so that was that more than certainly more than makes up the differences we got 28 more points from the free throw line than they did oh my god uh, they yes. made six and missed one two three four so they were six of ten so Pretty convincing victory for the Warriors and a, another NECC victory, as you said, Dan. And so now we've got the Prairie Heights Panthers coming up, and that won't be till next Friday. Right, and I'm thinking we probably want a little revenge there. I since am we let thinking. that one just sort of slip away from us. Uh, and that's that's on their home turf, so that'd be a good well good that's, place that's to... That's where we lost, let it slip away the first time. <laughs> yes, we did. So let's get some revenge this time. But, uh, it, you know, if we play like we did tonight... What I saw, I, mean, I only saw right, yeah. just a little bit of that first half, not much. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we played very well uh, first half, first quarter especially. We were up 17 to six at the end of the first quarter, and then scored 18 in the second quarter. So yeah, we had a had a very good, very good first half. West Noble slips to three and 12 down, one and seven in the Northeast Corner Conference. And they'll be hosting Laville on Saturday night. But yeah, Westview has off until a week from tomorrow night, so it's going to well be a little bit of a. That would explain why the Laville coach was here. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I saw him come in. Edison uh, came in earlier, mm -hmm. and uh, I was thinking, well, maybe he's just looking ahead to sectional already, because <laughs> I knew we didn't play him. I didn't think about the fact that you know, maybe. Yeah, I was surprised to see Laville on their schedule, but there again, it's kind of a straight shot on six. Once right. They, yeah. yeah. So it looks like Laville's picked up a couple of the teams over over this way, West Noble and and Central Noble. Right. Well, yeah. at least the girls. Oh, that's right. That was the Maybe girls. Maybe not the guys. We're not sure. Yeah. Yeah. They don't always do the same team. Speaking of the girls, of course, they'll be in action tomorrow night against Fremont in the second game down at the Central Noble sectional. But as Dan said earlier, that Whitco Central Noble game in the first game should be a barn burner also. So a lot of good basketball action on the girls' side will be going on down at Albion tomorrow night at Central Noble High School. If you can't get down there for the game, join us. We'll go on the air around 7.15 tomorrow night. Once again, the final score here tonight, Westview 67 and West Noble 46. That'll do it. Once again, we want to thank Adam Christner for stepping in and helping out in the first half of this ball game. Great job, Adam. And thanks to our engineer tonight. That was Justin uh, Geigley. Almost said Brandenburger again. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Justin. And uh, Roger Winger running the camera upstairs. That'll do it for tonight. For Dan Byler, this is Jerry Hosettle. Good night, everybody.
Tonight's streaming broadcast of Westview Warrior Basketball at LaGuanaMedia.com has been made possible by the following gold sponsors. Shipshe Service, located south of US-20 on State Road 5 in Shipshawana. By Height Auto Body on US-20 West in LaGrange. By Tiffany's Restaurant, located on East Lake Street in Topeka. Also by Jerry Standard Service in downtown Middlebury. And by LaGuana Printing and the Hometown Treasure. This evening's game is also brought to you by the following silver sponsors. The Fast Lane Subway in Topeka. By Emma Warehouse in downtown Emma. Also by Frontline Auto Tech on Taylor Drive in Shipshawana. By Topeka Do It Best Hardware at the Blinker Light in Topeka. By the Steve Miller team at Remax Realty Marketing. By Mike's Automotive Service on Layman Avenue in Topeka. By Intera Credit Union with locations in Shipshawana and Topeka. Also by Riegsecker Marketplace in Shipshawana. By the Brethren Retreat at Shipshawana Lake. By Dale's Handyman Service. By Troyer's Saddlery on North Village Drive in Shipshawana. By Warehouse Designs, located between Shipshawana and LaGrange on US-20. Also by Quality Floor, just three and a half miles north of Topeka on County Road 600 West. By Yoder Shipshawana Hardware, located in Yoder Shopping Center in Shipshawana. Weaver Furniture Sales, located just south of the intersection of State Road 5 and US-20 in Shipshawana. Our halftime trivia contest and pizza giveaway is made possible by Emma Cafe. And our individual sponsors are Bud and Margaret Fink, John and Leslie Cook, and Jim and Liz Stump. See the schedule on our website for our next streamcast of Westview Warrior Basketball at LaGuanaMedia.com.